Hi everyone, my name is Natalie. Today I'm going to do a library haul because I've been accumulating a few uh, books from my library recently. Uh, they seem to have the extended loan period over the summer, which is great because I've been getting out quite a few books that I've been seeing around. So quite a few of these are inspired by booktubers who have recently talked about them or have seen them recommended uh, in the last couple of weeks. So uh, let's just get into the books. So the first one is actually one that I, I'm not sure if I've heard this one particularly being reviewed, but I know that I've definitely seen people talk about her most recent book. And that is She Would Be King by Wayatu Moore. This author has recently uh, published a memoir uh, that's called A Dragon the something and the something. I can't remember the title at the moment. Um, but I've been wanting to read uh, this one in particular. I actually started listening to the audiobook and I thought it was really interesting but I felt like I needed a physical copy to understand better what was happening. The West African village of Lai, red-haired Gibesa is cursed at birth and exiled on suspicion of being a witch. Bitten by a viper and left for dead, she nevertheless survives. Way to more illuminates the tumultuous roots of Liberia, a country whose history is inextricably bound to the United States. Uh, so the main thing that really drew, drew me to this book was the mythology and magical realism aspect of the story. Uh, the, fa the fact that it's sort of a coming of, coming of age with magical uh, tones to it. I heard um, David from The Poptimist recently talk about this. That is The um, Severance by Ling Ma. Uh, and this is a dystopian novel that seems quite similar to the current situation that we have um, with a pandemic that um, is in a very modern situation. Ken has barely noticed when Shen fever sweeps New York. Family families flee, companies cease operation, the subway squeaks to a halt. She spends her free time photographing the abandoned city as an anonymous blogger. Uh, so I think it will be interesting to read this one. Uh, I was uncertain if I would actually be in the mood for a dystopian uh, so close to the corona situation. I feel like I haven't, I haven't necessarily been wanting to read anything uh, resembling uh, the current um, climate. Um, but I was really interested after hearing him talk about this one and um, I, th I thought that I would pick this up from the library so that I could read it in the near future if I felt like I was in the mood for it. I will also link the video where he talks about this. It was the POC creator tag, I think, um, that he talked about this. So I really am interested in reading this one. And the other book that he also talked about um, that I've been really wanting to read for a long time and I've heard especially Jen Kelly Campbell talk a lot about is A Place for Us uh, by Fatima Farhib Mirza and this is a book I think about a Muslim. Uh, a Place for Us catches an Indian Muslim family as they prepare for their eldest daughter's wedding. It's a story about family and uh, examination of love, identity and belonging. I'm looking particularly for Middle Eastern uh, authors and writers and stories um, and uh, this sounded really good and I know that it, it has been really popular so uh, in particular the way that David sold it uh, made me really interested as I will link as I said the video where he talks about this one. Uh, this will probably be one of the ones that I get to um, sooner rather than later hopefully at least. Um, and then one that I hadn't heard anyone talk about I don't think at least uh, I just picked it up on a whim uh, because I liked the cover and sounded interesting. It's called The Birds of Opulence by Crystal Williams. Wilkinson, a lyrical exploration of love and loss, the birth of opulence centers on several on several generations of women in a bucolic southern black township as they live with and sometimes surrender to madness. Um, so it seems to be both about uh, sexuality and uh, mental health and um, womanhood. For some reason, the description of it somehow made me think of uh, Raisin in the Sun, the way that it explores uh, these female characters, at least. I love using the library, especially sort of browsing in the physical uh, library to be able to find things that I hadn't, uh, sort of hidden gems. So hopefully this will be good. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to give this one a try. And then we have one that I've seen good reviews of, not a lot of them, but I think 
uh, was it uh, Book Materiality that has uh, done a positive review of this one, and that is Inferno, a memoir by Catherine Cho. To be honest, this is sort of catnip for me, the, the premise of this book. It seems like it uh, is looking both at mental illness in general and motherhood and the overlap or the way that those two, those two things come together. Uh, so that is a sort of... Um, I find that I'm really interested in reading stories about motherhood and uh, both in the fiction and non-fiction sense. The next one is another one inspired by a booktuber and that is Too Much and Not the Mood by Durga Chubos. This one uh, Alex from What Page Are You On very recently talked about. I think he did a POC books you should read or something like that video. I think that this was one of the ones that he talked about specifically talking about the immigrant experience. I have actually started reading the first essay and really enjoyed it um, so far so I have high hopes for this and also in general I tend to really like the essay form um, so yeah I, I think that this will be a really good reading experience. Next we have a book that I'm not sure if heard anyone talk specifically about this one, although I have definitely seen reviews of this author's previous book. Uh, so this is Starling Days by Rowan Hisayo Buchanan, uh, and this author wrote another book called... what is it called? Uh, Harmless Like You, which I think Mel loved, um, Mel from Mel's Brooklyn Adventures. This one is a queer book. That is the main reason I was interested in this. Mina, a classicist, search searches for solutions to her failing mental health using mythological women, but instead finds a beam of light in a living woman. Uh, so I think, again, mental health and uh, LGBTQ, LGBTQ themes the overlap with those things, I'm pretty much sold for the premise of this. Hopefully the writing is also really good. The next one I've also seen really good reviews for and that is The Magical Language of Others by E.G. Ko. This is, I think I've seen Olive from a book Olive uh, rate this highly. This is another memoir uh, by an Asian author and writing I think about identity again and language which is language in general is always something that I'm drawn to um, and especially in connection with uh, immigration and um, being biracial or being um, sort of of two identities. So the description says, the magical language of others weaves a profound tale of hard-won selfhood in our deep bonds to family, place and language. Um, so identity, language, uh, all those things are things that I love uh, to read about. And then last up we have a book that again I've been wanting to read since it came out last year uh, and that is The Ensemble by Aja Gable. So this is about a group of musicians and their lives. Uh, so that is basically what, what sold me about this book uh, and the premise is the musical theme. Um, it says they would never have been friends if they hadn't needed one another. Also, friendship is another thing I really like uh, to read about. They would never have found one another except for the art that drew them together. Following these four unforgettable characters, Aja Gable's debut novel gives a riveting look into the high-stakes, cutthroat world of musicians and of lives made in concert. In the last at least three years that I've loved reading nonfiction about music and I'm always looking for novels that um, talk about music, especially classical music, um, in a central way and there's not a lot of them or at least it's very difficult to find them because when you're searching for books you, you're not really getting um, literary fiction with musical themes so if you have any other recommendations for literary fiction novels or classics that have a strong classical music or sort of traditional um, um, traditional uh, instruments, a kind of theme running through them, definitely let me know. Um, but the the combination of music and friendship is what really made me interested in this one. Uh, so I have sort of, I've seen really bad reviews of it and I've been almost dissuaded from reading it, but then I just thought I've been wanting to read it for a while, so I might as well try it. And if it's disappointing, then that's that. It, there's no harm in getting it from the library. So, 
yeah, so those are the books that I currently have out from the library. I also have some um, audiobooks. Uh, at the moment I am listening to uh, Saigon, which is uh, really good so far. I've, I think I've made it through halfway of the book. Uh, so that is my main audiobook at the moment. And then the other one that I have out from the library through the audio is The Night, the Night Watchman? Yeah, um, by Louise Eldridge, and this is uh, an indigenous author, I think, um, that I've seen recommended a lot on Instagram recently, and um, from various uh, bookstagrammers that I've recently been following, I've seen um, this author and this book in particular come uh, up again and again, so I thought that I would give the audiobook a try of this one. And I think it was uh, a fiction book based on the author's grandfather, um, who was a watchman in the 50s. That's basically the, the understanding I have of this book so far, but I thought that I will probably uh, switch over to this one when I finish Saigon. So those are all of the books that I have out from the library at the moment. Let me know if you've read any of these and your thoughts about them or if you have any recommendations to me based on the books that I've shown you today. I would always love to know that. I hope you're having a really good day and I will talk to you soon.